presenters. Dr. Okay. Umi, your stage. Assalamualaikum. Ah, no. I, oh my, can see me? Yes, you are. Okay. You, you are. You are. You are by the seaside. That's that's yes. my. <laughs> With a very good that, mood here. Yeah, yeah. That, it's that's, too that's windy. My favorite. Yeah, <laughs> that's my favorite place too. <laughs> All right, please proceed, Dr. Umi. Okay, thank you, Madam Rosiato, for this very, um, I think, uh, engaging and attractive session. Okay, so now, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and participants, this is my pleasure, extends a warm welcome to each and every one of you for our panel discussions on our topic today, which is related to how to organize unethical practice and emotional manipulations in the halal economy. So I believe that all of us and all of you and our participants today already know who is our final finalist, uh, panelist for uh, our next session. Can I say, um, Puan, Ali, um, Puan Adlin, we also have uh, Daniel. Yes. They have the other one. Muhammad Jabba Abdul Rahim, can I see you? Okay, there you are. Okay, so um, before we, we, we begin, um, let me introduce about myself. My name is Dr. Umi Hamidatun Muhammad Sofian Lee. I am a research fellow in uh, USIM and also a senior lecturer in University Science, uh, University Science Islam University Science Islam Malaysia, USIM. So, uh, Ad Madam Adlin is one of my colleagues and also my research partner in Halal, uh, inshallah. So, we will have a very simple discussion uh, today with our panelists. Can I start with Madam uh, Anna? Maria, can, yes. you, can you hear me? Yes, sure. Okay, that's good. All right, I have uh, one question um, to you. Yeah. So, we may discuss about it. Okay, so um, what strategies can business employ to adapt the evolving consumer expectations and market trend, ensuring the continuance of relevance and the success of halal brand for the long term sustainability? For the long term, uh, yes. So, uh, I think that uh, there is uh, three key points. Okay, All right. The first one for sure will be a uh, reliable halal certification um, the second one will be the communication but the third one and the very important one will be educating the consumer because uh, i can see that uh, the certification centers the accreditation centers uh, the standardization center we are all doing a lot of efforts, but if the consumer is not properly uh, educated, mm -hmm. uh, all our efforts will not be successful. Uh, and I'm not talking only about non-Muslim consu consumers mm -hmm. that are the 30% that we saw before, okay? But also about the 70% of the Islamic consumer. We saw in the other presentation uh, a lot of mistakes in communication, a lot of mistakes in certifications, but all this can exist now in the market because the consumer is not well educated. Yes. And um, for, uh, for uh, Islamic brands, uh, my suggestion is uh, to go slowly slowly in the market and invest in the market invest not only on the product on the, how the product is done but also in promotion advertising because what i can see in european market for example is that we have a lot of application for a last certification but uh, 50% of the companies that apply for certification remain in the market for two or three years. Mm. They don't see immediate result, And the reason they don't see immediate result is because they are not investing in the halal part of their business. Okay, they consider this uh, as, a, um, as a niche market. Mm. And we all know that uh, is not exactly a niche market. Okay, that's good. Um, do we have any comment from other speakers? Any comment, may... maybe? No, okay. Dr. Umi. Um, <laughs> All right, thank Dr. you. Dr. Umi, right? I didn't okay. pronounce it. Okay, yes, wrong. yes. Um, you know, I think right now the halal 
word is very much associated mm. with Islam. Yes, definitely. And, and uh, which, which is not wrong. Obviously, mm-hmm. it is, uh, uh, you know, part and parcel of that. Mm-hmm. I think it should also be associated with quality control, yes. with cleanliness, you know, with ethical, with mm-hmm. sustainability. And mm-hmm. therefore, it will open itself up to um, non-Muslim community to mm-hmm. adopt yes. halal uh, <clears throat> practice as well. Yes. So that's my very, very uh, simple uh, outlook on it because mm. frankly, for non-Muslims to eat halal food, it's not a problem. Yes. But they need to understand what that logo Mm-mm. or the meaning of halal connotates. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for a non-Muslim, the religion is not important, it, yes. you know, but what it represents would be cleanliness, you know, the ethical mm, practice yes. that's put in to raise the, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, you know, livestock and mm-hmm. also the quality of, of all that that comes through. So that's my mm-hmm. humble opinion. Mm, okay. Can I just make a comment on this very, very quickly? Okay. Uh, Brother Daniel said that for non-Muslim, it will it is not a problem to consume halal, Mm-mm. but actually this is not what is happening. I can um, uh, give you an example of the Italian market in which mm-hmm. moment there is there is a boycotting of uh, halal uh, products. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, because of uh, anti-Islamic party, anti-Islamic uh, movement, and uh, they are using the halal meat. Uh, uh, to describe to the other non-Muslims how uh, unethical it is the halal. I was in a TV mm. show yesterday where we was attached for the problem of the halal meat. So, yes, we have to promote the halal as, uh, 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 for, for, for its ethics also, not yes. only for the mm-hmm. Islamic part, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Uh, it is very important to explain to non muslim that these ethics are good for all mankind. Yes. Is, uh, is, yes. Um, that uh, our mm. treatment of animal is uh, mm. respectful, is uh, for their safety, for their mm-hmm. um, for the animal health mm. and protection. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, we are coming back to the point that we must educate mm. the consumer first. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think maybe because of the lacks of awareness, that's why the incidents that happen, like Anna, Anna said just now, I think in terms of prom- promotions of the integrations of the halal within the, the supply chain itself need be promoted throughout the system, throughout the multimedia, so that they can um, know what are the benefits of the product itself. Not only because of the religion's belief, but I believe it's actually beyond the obligations of the religion. So that is uh, the importance of the consumers of halal products and how we need to educate uh, the people within the areas, uh, not locally, but also globally. Okay, so can we can move I, for I, the I, other question? Bit... Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay, okay, okay. That's right. Okay. I've been doing a lot of training um, All right. for halal and I also have uh, overseas uh, of participants and I have always said this that um, you don't look at it as a religion but look at it as a standard as well um, mm-hmm. like HACCP you know it, it's a much better standard than HACCP and and we don't just talk about slaughter it is what is the concern about the Europeans and the Westerners about you know the concern is about the welfare of the animals but um, I just like to emphasize more on Toyi. That is my, my own thing, you know. Uh, I always tell my participants, look at the Toyi, but how, how effective it is. You know, it's much better than just HACCP because you're looking n- not just from farm to fork, but you're also looking at the sources before that, the processes up until it reaches the consumers. That's, that's my concern, actually. I think we are all agreeing on, on, on the fact that, you know, to, to make it a standard versus just a religious thing. Mm. I think, you know, Anna, in, in this part of the world, um, the Chinese and the non-Muslims actually would walk into any Malay stores, uh, Indian Muslim stores and consume the food without even thinking twice about whether it's halal or not halal. I think, uh, you know, fair to say that different parts of the world reacts differently uh, to different things. So, but I think we're coming back to the same point is into uh, make, making sure that it is a standard of quality and ethical practices and all that beyond that of a uh, religious uh, standard. 
right. Sorry, Dr. Umi. Okay, that's good. So um, I think um, we already come to the conclusion on how important it is um, that have been sharing by uh, our three panelists. Um, Mohamed Jabal, do you have any comment on that? Then we are discussing about the integrities of ethics, how important to Muslim and non-Muslim related to the halal product and throughout the supply chain itself from the fork uh, to right. the I market. Okay. Cover. Uh, I just want to end on, this is based on my experience uh, for okay. the past 16 years and, uh, you know, uh, we have been developing the system and uh, once the system is considered as uh, finished and ready to use, uh, we, uh, we are taught that uh, people, you know, especially when we talk about the halal industry, they are ready to use the system, but turn out, when we promote the system, uh, people are not ready, people are not competent. Okay. Yes. Mm -mm. You know, uh, so my point is, uh, you don't have to talk about digitalization, whereas the user <laughs> itself is not competent. The user yes. itself is not ready. Not ready, yeah? yes. So let's get back to the... Yeah, they are not ready. This is real, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are not ready. Um, I mean, uh, this is my... my uh, not Maybe it's not fair because we are mm -hmm. talking about the the uh, uh, Malaysian standard where we mm -hmm. have, you know, yes. Allah Insurance System is consists of mm -hmm. 10 elements, you know? Yes, so, yes. So uh, again... Um, Instead of just uh, selling the system, uh, we want people to be competent and we want mm. people to know uh, what is the pillar, what is the principle mm -hmm. of halal yes. and haram, then only mm -hmm. we talk about digitalization. <laughs> All right, that is my point of view. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jabal. So I think uh, why not we move um, to the areas of Daniel and also Jabal that we are looking to uh, digitalization. I have one question related to AI technology. Shall we discuss about that? Sure. <laughs> I think Ad uh, Puan Adlin also quite interested because there have few research that have been done by her related to the uh, AI technology. Okay, so um, I would like to ask, maybe we can start with um, Anna. Uh, what are the ethical con uh, considerations that we need to relook at when we are discussing about the implementations of AI solution in the industry of halal itself? Sorry, my audio was uh, out. Okay. I'm not sure if I well understand the question. Okay. Can you oh. repeat, please? Um, I said that what, so, is what actually... are the ethics? Yes, consideration yeah. when we want to adopt the ideas of AI technology to be implemented in the uh, halal industry itself. Uh, okay, I think that uh, our brother before already said mm -hmm. one of the problem we find uh, is that uh, the companies sometimes the certification centers and yes. the uh, consumers are not ready, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, if you give you the example of the Italian market, uh, we tried to uh, assess to some technologies mm -hmm. and the first problem was uh, the companies, uh, people in the companies was not speaking English. Okay. <laughs> so, very few people Yes. Uh, speaking English or speaking other languages and there mm. is not the translation of the programs, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. The second is they have uh, their own uh, systems, um, mm. company systems uh, for mm -hmm. raw materials. Uh, they mm -hmm. have programs that uh, cannot be integrated in the mm. new programs. Mm -hmm. So they have to rebuild their system of accountancy, of raw mm -hmm. materials, of everything. And if Alal is not the um, first of this of their market, mm -hmm. they will take a take a, a, a stop. Okay. They rather prefer to stop the Alal part uh, um, because they are not ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, another problem is uh, to to make uh, to to share with the companies that mm -hmm. uh, they are not sharing uh, their uh, internal secrets. Mm -hmm. Okay, some yes. of the companies they feel like to get access to the the, the QR code or to to the the uh, blockchain. Like mm -hmm. we are controlling mm -hmm. all the process, mm -hmm. all the raw materials, mm -hmm. all their 
suppliers and the secrets mm. and sharing mm. with ev everybody but obviously mm. this is not the point mm. um the blockchain doesn't mm. show you all the steps of the process yes. mm -mm. only guarantee that what you are declaring is uh, confirmed mm. okay yes is not arising so uh yes i agree with uh, our brother uh mm. the, the the problem we are facing because we as a certification center we are uh, applying obviously programs mm. ae mm. and uh, a lot more but the problem is yes consumer companies and certification centers are not ready mm. So um, actually, how to overcome the limitation and the challenge that we are facing now? Because I believe when we are discussing about try to make the halal industry globally, so whether we like it or not, we need to adapt. Um, I mean, the potentials of the AI, <clears throat> yes, we need to adapt with the eras of um, digitalization, IR revolution, for example, so that we will able to achieve the needs of the people, not only locally, but globally. So um, what do you comment on that? How actually uh, the overcome uh, the obstacle that the challenge that we are facing now, especially among the suppliers, among the uh, the manufacturers who are not ready to open access towards the uh, technology uh, that we are having now. If I can add, uh, I was listening to the presentation of Brother Mohammed, and yes, we have many issues of uh, Allah certification centers that are accredited yes. by this center or not this yes. center or by Jakim or not. Mm. But one of the point is, uh, do Allah certification can access to accreditation? Because we know that there's certification center that applied, for example, to Jakim mm -hmm. eight years ago and still yes. had not the visit, okay, yes. or applied the two uh, GCC three years ago and still had not the visit and so on. Mm -hmm. So can we consider that these certification centers uh, are less trustable than another certification center that already get mm -hmm. the assessed, maybe because uh, it mm -hmm. was a nearby country or it was... Mm -hmm. so what have to be the uh, minimum standard of mm -hmm. a certification center? What have to be, how can we integrate all this process and uh, make an international accreditation or international basic requirement? Mm -hmm. So I think that this will be uh, the key because if mm -hmm. all the certification center will share their certified companies, Components. so the raw material mm. certified, and we can have mm. all this in one platform, like Malaysia yes. is trying mm. to do, but only to do. for Jakim accredited. Uh, yes, companies. yes, yes. Maybe we can help each other because yes, Alal, like all the other um, markets are international. Mm. Mm -mm, Our yes. companies in Italy buy raw materials from Malaysia, from Taiwan, from China, from and uh, they need to assess the ALA certified mm -hmm. yes. ingredients or mm -hmm. the ALA certified products. Okay, um, Mr. Daniel, do you have do you have any comment on this yeah, <laughs> when we are discussing about the digital from... and also technology that we have? Learning from the other panelists, but uh, I just want to kind of take a step. <laughs> Uh, from a very different perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, what does AI uh, work on? What's the mm. base of AI? The mm -hmm. basis of AI is data. Yes. Right? Mm. You're talking about ethical practices. Practices. I mean, mm. today, today, when we kind of look at what data is available out mm -hmm. there, it is very much a lot of data that is collected to program AI systems mm -hmm. today. Yes. From the, mm. It's from the Western world. Mm. Right, our participation in, uh, you know, in from an Eastern world side in mm. contributing data, so that the algorithm that is produced by, uh, you know, to run the AI system is not biased. Mm. It's not biased, mm. not because people want to make it biased, because the data is biased. Bias, yes. The mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing that the, a lot of AI experts are thinking about is also today, as it stands, we collect a lot of data mm. that is used by human and mm. chat GPT actually dig, dig into those data to talk about, uh, uh, you know, to build stories and stuff. Mm -mm. A few years down the road, those data will be produced by AI. Yes. So the question is... The data also outdated. I mean, um, <laughs> they can just... 
Yeah, it's so, just no, can capture for the two it. years back and yeah. not the current one. Yes, and, and I think the other the other concern is, um, uh, you are now using AI to build the decision tree yes. on data that is produced by another yes. AI. But, so yes. so, you know, so that's the big question that not mm-hmm. just the halal world is looking mm-hmm. at is is but the also AI the others. world, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So when you kind of look into this, then you can really say. You know, a lot of the technology, uh, you know, nuances will come into play. Mm-hmm. Data governance. What kind because... of data do you put in? What kind of data don't you put in? And, and what's mm-hmm. the right data, mm-hmm. the good data and, and mm-hmm. all that. So once mm-hmm. you get that true, then you have to have a body to provide the guidance. Guidance. Right? Mm-hmm. I yes. think the challenge today if you, is that we have multiple bodies. And, yes. You know, I'm right. The other one is right. So who's mm-hmm. right? Right, mm, so so yes. so the, the unification of a standard body mm-hmm. will be very very critical. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, when you roll it out to the marketplace, you know I think everyone talked about training and and all that. Um, training is a big word. Is it a skill mm-hmm. set training or the mm, application yes. of mm, that, of training you know, technology mm. training? Right. Mm-hmm, so, yes. so what are we talking about? Right. So, mm-hmm. so, um, a lot of people say AI, and you go and take a course in AI mm-hmm. and come out, and you don't really get a job unless you're a researcher. Mm-hmm. What mm-hmm. people want is how do you apply AI, apply AI. to AI. Yes. to halal industry, mm-hmm. for example, mm-hmm. and yes. that is uh, clearly quite missing in mm-hmm. the industry mm-hmm. today because mm-hmm. I think every new technology that comes up mm-hmm. needs a little bit of time for the industry mm. to catch up and say, ah, yes. okay, I can apply, um, you know, I, which is my presentation into sustainability, into halal, into ethical mm. practices. Um, mm-hmm. When that comes about, then you would have the interest because training you can push out. And like here in Singapore, we offer people money to take the training. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just that. It is like, do I get a job after I take the training? Track, track, yes, uh, that is the most important I, things to yeah. think. If I don't get a job, then why should I go even What to for? Take... <laughs> yes. Exactly, right? And so, then it, so I... um, the training also costs a lot. Yes. So, so costs, who, who, depending on whoever is paying it, over here, mm. the government pays 90% of, 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 mm. of the cost. But, you know, if you kind of very simple, simplification-wise mm. put it in the category mm. of, you know, AI is based on data. Let's mm. get the data governance piece uh, uh, right. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and let you know, and you want to make an ethical decision. Mm. It has to be non-biased. Mm-hmm. And if the data is biased, then your decision will be biased. Mm, yes, right? I and agree then, with that mm-hmm. because yeah. we don't have any proper control on, on that. And then, yeah. um, I think to apply the technology itself, we need to have a check and balance. They have one body have been as the monitoring uh, functions and then this is the one who can uh, check whatever that have been done whether it's correct or not so we have a missing part there mm-hmm. right and, I th- yes. um, can I add a bit um, okay yes, yes I'm, I'm interested because just now uh, Anna Maria was saying about the platform you know a yeah. platform yeah right now as I understand it mm-hmm. OIC Smith is actually bringing it all to you know together um, all these HCBs and all that. So HCBs have their own companies that have taken certification from them. If all this can be brought in together, right, under one uh, platform, that means everyone will be sharing this information. So for me, right, OIC SMIC should be the one that is pushing for this agenda because the I mean, even Jackin is involved and B, BJPH is also involved. Everybody is there. And then we have all these experts over here uh, about AI. So um, AI is actually something that depends on how much information is inputted into there. And, and because if it is all under one um, a governing body like SMIC, right, inshallah, it will work. It will work. It's a matter of getting people together. So instead of just having meetings all the time, do something that you can get because the technology now is not that expensive. The experts are there. The experts are there. And I'm very sure just like what happened during COVID, everybody is so afraid of using the technology. Now everyone is really open to it. So that is a solution really. There is a solution. As long as we 
aspire to it and we yep. subtract to it. Yeah. Dr. Adeline, you know, you're, you're so right, right? Everyone asks, which C level actually help accelerate the transformation to digital? And everyone says CIO, no? CEO, mm. no? No. It's B <laughs> for COVID. Yes. Right? It forces right. us to, to, to think out of the box and, um, and do things differently. And we sometimes are very complacent and say, we're happy with what we have. I don't want to change. Uh, and when COVID happened, nobody can get out of the house and everyone has to use digital. And now we have progressed digital much faster than what we would have anticipated, right? So, yes. so yeah. And, and AI should be uh, along that. Maybe it's an ISO standard kind of thing mm. that people yeah. should subscribe yes, to. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And say, mm-hmm. oh, are you, mm-hmm. now you get a stamp of approval. Yeah, mm-hmm. AIO or whatever, right? A, a stamp mm-hmm. for whatever, right? Mm-hmm. A process or delivery or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, then that become a global standard. And now you, mm-hmm. a, you know, a very mm-hmm. uniform, maybe even a halal logo that's uniform. People look at it and say, mm-hmm. oh, you know, this is truly a, a, a trusted brand uh, at the end of the day. Okay, that's good. Um, any additional before we end our session today? I only have 30 minutes that have been reminded by our <laughs> <laughs> our committee. So, um, do you have any last word maybe from uh, Sheikh Jabal, Muhammad Jabal regarding the the further revolutions that you you are actually can imagine to expand the halal industry that we have currently. Yeah, uh, thank you. We want to make halal accessible for everyone. Yes, yes. One, we want to spread the you know uh, good knowledge, understanding about halal to everyone. Halal is for all. Halal is uh, something that universal. When we talk about yes. SDG. Uh, sustainable development and growth it is actually already governed in in yeah. islamic term you know makosi yeah. sharia so you know uh, uh let's continue it is jihad for mm. us to ensure that the food in uh, the food that we consume is halal and yes. also we are you know assist the the the, the muslim or the 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 community mm-hmm. Uh, when they consume halal food, inshallah, our prayer will be uh, accepted by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Inshallah, it's not just about halal food, it's not just about yes. industry. Yeah, by end mm. of the day, we want our prayer to be accepted by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. <laughs> I think yeah, that's uh, my my last message. Thank you. Salam. Okay. So, do you do we have any uh, last comment from our panelists today? Any additional? Um, before I conclude the discussion. Okay. You no, or a... okay. <laughs> so, um, first of all, and now we are coming to the ends of the panelist discussion. Alhamdulillah. Um, thank you so much for my kindly assistant from Madam Rosiatul Akma Usman. Nice to know you. Inshallah, we I will hope that we will have a very good uh, cooperations and collaboration. Inshallah, in future, not only you but with all the panelists that will uh, attend with me uh, during this uh, conference session. So um, I extend my warmest welcome to our esteemed panelists and all participants today. Thank you for your for joining us, and I wish you uh, all of you uh, very um, uh, get a very good uh, sharing of knowledge that we have. Then we are coming together to uh, try to protect the halal industry that we have uh, because we can see it can go. Uh, further and also uh, very expand in future inshallah with uh, that um, may Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and grant us greater co- accomplishment in future so um, do we have any photo session oh we must have it <laughs> uh, that's something that uh, that that has uh, been uh not thought about in uh, in yesterday's session so oh yeah. really okay <laughs> so in my session i will never forget taking a photo <laughs> okay <laughs> all right so hmm. uh, let's go so um we'll take the responsibility as our photographer brother no? i have doctor no phone here brother no could you take the photo brother no Dota Lina, can you capture okay. the moment uh, for us? I, okay. I, okay. Uh, let let uh, our organizer take the okay, picture. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. Maybe perhaps when the 
Dr. Alina and Dr. No could uh, be on oh. screen too. Mr. Jabal, put your eyes on camera, please. I can't see your eyes. Okay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I tried to put the background, but I don't know why. I can't do that. You're making us jealous. That's yeah. why. Okay, <laughs> it's okay. You know, uh, it's a soothing, it's a soothing uh picture anyway. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, brother, right. no one, two, three. One more time. One more time. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. So, so thank you very thank much, you Dr. Umi. For having me. Thank you so much. I'm still new in this industry. I hope I will be able to join more um like this conference, inshallah, seminar or any kinds of workshop that have been organized by organizer. So I hope to see all of you again. All right. Thank you so much, Rosetto. So you may conclude you. the session because you are okay. the the head of the team for our discussion today. Okay. The floor is yours, Rata. All right. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Wow. Uh, Sister Anna Maria, I want to show us your background. You you are staying somewhere. Uh, I wanted to show you Venice, but it's uh, wow. It's Let me show you. Okay. Nice. Wow. wow. <laughs> I've been there before. <laughs> we have I wait for you in there? all to visit me. Okay. 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 Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. I Anak, think we, we um, share... you can you can uh, conduct a very simple conference or workshop in your place and let us know. Invite us as a guest. Let's speaker. do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, do one it. thing we share we share in common is our, uh, our yes, love for yes. the for the seaside. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, All yes. Right. Okay, um, thank you very much, everyone who's present here. Uh, it's, it's a very good uh, and enlightening uh, perspective um, that we have shared. And let's make this uh, knowledge sharing mm -hmm. to be more meaningful by implementing it so that it becomes uh, later a wisdom for our future generation to uh, continue the journey. It's long a journey. It is a very, very long journey. I've been here since... Uh, 2005 uh, for halal and um, yeah uh, I, I still for halal pharmaceutical I still feel that it's still in the embryonic stage and as we talk along I think once we thought of progressing up there's still an obstacle that's why roads, roads are curvy because the curvy just shows that it goes down again and you have to struggle up but no worries as we go along this road uh, we find new acquaintances new people like we met here now today uh, and uh, rekindle and re-strengthen uh, existing uh, relationship and uh, a reminder uh, that we should continue uh, keeping in touch. So inshallah, we'll meet again in future and let's use this platform of International Halal Conference to be a medium for us to continue our jihad. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank <laughs> you.